Crossman Corporation asked me what I wanted to review next for the channel, I without hesitation said, The New Benjamin Maximus. I read every one of your comments, and collectively the greatest concerns you voice are we want cheaper and we want lighter. So the decision was easy. Weighing in at 6.6 .6 pounds, aired up, scoped up, and with a high quality tactical sling, this $200 pre-charged pneumatic is a screaming bargain. This new rifle is based on the tried and true Benjamin Discovery, of which I had zero experience. So I went a little crazy testing pellets. In the end, the group distilled its way down to 12, which had varying degrees of acceptability at 30 yards. Today, we're gonna shoot the 12, and pick five with us to move out to 60 yards, and then from there declare a winner that will move to 90. Yes, 90 yards with this $200 PCP. One of the great things about being an air gun tester in Florida is that you get to enjoy nature's wonderful little creations. Meet Pseudomyrex gracilis, or the elongate twig ant. These little bastards are a half inch long and pack a nasty wasp-like sting. All during film day with the Maximus, they were dropping out of the tree above me, falling down my shirt, and stinging my back. Nice group, though, out of the Jumbo Monsters. The 8.4 grain JSBs are quite a bit lighter than the Monsters, and consequently, velocities picked up. Pellet staggering as seen here, two landing high and two landing low, is a common trait when air guns exceed 930 to 940 feet per second. The higher velocity often destabilizes the pellet, causing it to corkscrew its way down to the target and make a pattern like this one. Now here's where things get interesting. Corkscrewing pellets can actually be quite accurate at close distance, and sometimes don't manifest themselves as problematic until distances are moved out past 50 yards. As you'll see later on, this 8.4 grain Diabolo field by Air Arms is one such example. In case you're wondering why here at AEAC we do most of our testing out at 50 and 100 yards for you, this is the reason. Hmm. Corkscrewing isn't normally an indicator of a bad pellet, but rather a pellet that's not heavy enough to match the power output of the gun. If you're going to use your Maximus for hunting and pesting inside of 30 yards, the new Polymag Short is probably going to be one of the best choices for you. If you've been through some of the other videos here on the channel, and you've seen these pellets hit calibrated gelatin at 50 yards, you'll understand why I say this.
you've probably already noticed, but we're shooting pellets in order from heaviest to lightest. Per card. Moving over a thousand feet per second, three high and two low are likely an indicator of more corkscrewing. <laughs> These 7.33 grains from JSB are really screaming. They're so short and compact they have a tendency to want to tumble head over heels and the Maximus is breech. Loading one backwards would be very easy to do. They're so tiny I can barely manipulate them into the breach. They're going down range pretty straight though. That's what I love about air guns. They always keep you guessing. The 135 cubic centimeter tank on the Maximus is refillable to 2000 PSI and we'll get you about 30 usable shots. Expect an eight and a half grain pellet to give you about 17 foot pounds of energy across the fill. If you're gonna shoot your Maximus out to 50 or 100 yards and want the most consistency to avoid pellet drop, recharge every 11 shots or when the manometer reaches about 1700 PSI. If you do, average power will get compressed to 18.69 foot-pounds of energy across the 11. And this is what I did for the making of the video. For the most consistency and in power inside of 60 yards, use a heavier pellet like the 13.5 grain JSB Monster. This larger pellet helps the Maximus develop almost 21 foot-pounds of energy across the 31 shots. Shot charts like these give air gunners goosebumps, and there's something about a 13.5 grain pellet that just jives with the Maximus's factory tune. With the heavier pellet, simply refill every 25 shots for at 1250 PSI. Refilling the Maximus is a piece of cake, and one of the great things about its 2000 PSI reservoir is that it can be filled with a hand pump. But since the heat index is approaching 100 degrees, I'll be using my carbon fiber tank courtesy Omega. Once you've removed your rifle's protective fill cap, just connect it to your fill source. The Foster fitting connectors make it quick and secure. The Maximus's working fill pressure is 1,000 to 2,000 PSI. By keeping it in that window and using the prescribed fill charts, you'll help the rifle achieve maximum performance. Never exceed 2,000 PSI. The Barracuda Hunter has long been one of my favorite pellets. It's an effective hollow point that normally does well on all of my guns and across all calibers, 
so if you're going to be an air gunner, it makes good sense to always have these on hand. It's also important to recognize that sometimes your gun just doesn't like them and you can't force it. There's a lot of confusion around copper-plated pellets, and I myself am among the confused. I know for sure that they look cool, and that in some guns they shoot quite well. I also know for sure that my chronograph has a difficult time seeing them. Air gunner theories and marketing departments suggest that they keep the barrel cleaner, increase velocity, are more accurate, and are even more humane to an animal if you shoot it and don't kill it. Damn it. I'd love to hear your guys' comments as to whether your chronographs have trouble seeing them as well. There we go. The Maximus seems to like them though, and I guess that at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. The H&N Field Target Trophy is one of those pellets that's offered in multiple head sizes for you to experiment with. I can normally find one that works well so long as the pellet's weight matches the gun's power output. I tried them all and the Maximus likes the 4.50 head size the best. Not bad. H&N Sniper Pellet is new on the market and comes in light, medium, and magnum size for you to play with. What? I am your father's, brother's, nephew's, cousin's, former roommate. What's that make us? Absolutely nothing! Which is what you are about to become. Prepared to You have the ring, and I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. Now let's see how well you handle it. <laughs> well, you gotta admit, they are a bit phallic looking. I normally don't shoot wad cutters and guns as powerful as the Maximus. They tend to get darty much past 700 feet per second. But if you can find one that works well with your gun, they're devastating on small birds and rodents. If you're using your shooting crony in the shade, make sure that there's no rays of sunshine coming through the trees and landing on a sensor, because if there are, it'll cause it to error.
The Crossman Premier Copper Plated Magnums are a 10.6 grain pellet that I initially mistook as being a 7.9 grain pellet. I shot the 7.9s and the 10.6 Premiers out of the brown box, and while they grouped about the same as these, the Copper Plated proved the most consistent. They also happen to be the pellets that Crossman sent along with the Maximus, so chances are they'll group well with it, and you should probably try them. Finding just the right pellet for your gun is a lengthy process, folks, and once you think you have, you should move out past 50 yards just to be sure. Oftentimes, I'm surprised by what I find. The Maximus has really opened my eyes to how much air gun you can actually get today for $200. It's handsome, light, agile, and accurate. The finish is what you'd expect and by no means what you'd get on a $500 air gun, but it's very appropriate for this rifle's intended purpose. It draws youth and new hobbyists into the lifestyle, and it does all the main things right. The plastic trigger has a nice wide blade and is actually really comfortable. It's technically a single stage, but it's got enough creep in the beginning to feel like a decent dual stage trigger. And it was very predictable. The safety is manual, so parents you'll have to teach your kids good shooting habits. I've got to admit, most 7.5 pound triggers get me off my game, but this one didn't. The extra weight should also eliminate any chance of an accidental misfire. To keep price and weight to a minimum, the Maximus is without any sound suppression, and I'm okay with it. It's not painful to the ear, and most of the noise comes from the downrange shockwave. To the shooter, there's a little valve ping, and to the shootee, there's moderate rifle crack. To really determine if a pellet agrees with your gun, move back to 60 yards or more. I'm often surprised to see the pellets that shot well at 30 yards open up at 60, and then the ones that shot kind of loose at 30 yards tighten down. By pushing your targets back, you'll quickly learn of any pellet wobble or flight issues that hadn't manifested themselves in close, and in doing so, will more frequently hit your mark. Four out of five of the JSB monsters grouped in less than a half inch hole, so this is probably a good long range pellet for the Maximus. But I didn't pull that first shot, and this is a process of elimination, so we're moving on. If 
you recall, the Barracuda power shot lights out at 30 yards, but in the Maximus it destabilizes by the time it reaches 60. It doesn't make it bad, it just makes it not right for this rifle. Here's the kicker guys, while your Maximus will likely have similar palette preferences to this one, it may not, so you'll want to experiment. You'll recall me saying earlier that often pellets destabilize in flight when velocities exceed 930 feet per second. I speak in trending generalities for good reason. And I would ask you guys, my partners, to do the same. The inexperienced are seeking knowledge from your comments and in what they learn here. And we've all got a responsibility to them to avoid words like never, always, and worthless. Most often I see these words tied to the reviews when shooting back-to-back -back groups with different brands of pellet. The common line of thinking is that the gun will never be accurate unless one shoots at least 20 of that type of pellet through the bore before testing. While that may sometimes be the case, in my experience, that requirement is rare. If together we take some care sharing our experiences, in the end, we'll be collectively smarter for it. Damn. Now that's what I'm looking for. This might be our pellet, guys. I'm calling it guys, the new H&N Sniper Medium's our winner. Out to 90 we go. Our target measures 8 inches across. Winds are steady at 6 for my 1 to 7, and drop is 1.75 dots at 9x when sighted in at 30 yards. Well that's all for today guys. I hope you enjoyed our very first 12 pellet smackdown and full review of the brand new Benjamin Maximus. If you think this rifle's for you, I'll leave you a special link and coupon code in the description. I'm Steve Shally. thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe so I can see you at the next one.